slow down. All you riddle, <laughs> Too all many you hits. riddle experts out there. But Chris, want to throw to you as the Kings announced Fan Fest and that leak of Mike Bibby a couple weeks ago. All the leaks are now coming to fruition. The De'Aaron Fox leak with the shoes, and now this, along with Fan Fest. Yes, there you go. That's half the announcement is uh, Fan Fest gets announced for October 20th. That's always uh, one of the funner days, especially, you know, if you're somebody who's got a big old family and can't afford to, you know, pay for 15 tickets or whatever to a Kings game. I believe Fan Fest is completely free. Um, let me read what they have here so you don't take my word for us. Join us at Golden One Center for an afternoon of fun for annual Fan Fest. Get your look. At the at, at the Sacramento Kings as they prepare for the season. Plus, you get a chance to meet the Kings Entertainment broadcast staff uh, and special fan experiences and discounts throughout the arena right outside. You all have access to the Doco Block Party with games, entertainment, mm-hmm. and fun on your way into the arena. And you won't want to miss this free, yes, free event to celebrate the start of the season. That will be Sunday, 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 October 20th, the week wow. before the season starts, October 20th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. You can go get your tickets right now at kings.com forward slash fan fest to go reserve those tickets. Uh, again, those are completely free, uh, but you do have to reserve tickets and and things like that. You won't be assigned any seats. Um, at least that's how it's been in the past. There's no assigned seating. You just kind of first come first serve really good time for all the kids. And uh, again, if you just want to go out there and see your Kings play and you might not have the opportunity to do it throughout the season, uh, that fan fest is a really, really good opportunity uh, to go do so. And like Alan said, they also revealed some Jersey news as the Kings unveiled their classic edition jerseys as they will be coined this season, which will, um, Celebrate the Kings 2002 through 2008 jerseys that have Sacramento across the front. It is purple, uh, the jersey is, with white lettering. Uh, And let's see here, black outline as well. The secondary SK logo, which was introduced in 1994 and is used in the team as a team brand until 2014, was used on a uniform for the first time with this design peering on the right side of the side, right side of the shorts. The 2024-25 Classic Edition is more than just the jersey. It's a tribute to our city and the game we love. It represents our proud history and the unforgettable moments shared on the court. There are few things I love more in this world, more than the descriptions of basketball jerseys. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so those uh, will be great. And like you said, those were the ones that Mike Bibby leaked. Uh, Jerseys that have yet to be revealed are the King City Edition jerseys. And those will be worn for the first time on November 16th against the Utah Jazz, which will be the first home game of the NBA Cup, which will most likely be the uh, they will be featured uh, the featured jerseys for those NBA Cup games. So uh, haven't yet gotten the look at those jerseys yet, but those were the blue ones last year. I have no idea. I really, I have, I'm so, I don't know if anybody's good at it, but I feel like I'm extra terrible at remembering which one's the statement, which one's the city, which one's the, yeah, the, I don't know. Cause I thought, yeah, this blue one that we have in here. Yeah. And then there's the Kentucky looking one over there. One of them's the statement. One of them's hey, the city. If you want to make a statement in the city, you know, get both. That's that's what I know. And yeah, the classics are a whole nother layer of this, which I don't know. Um, I believe they have also announced which games they will be wearing these jerseys for. I think you can find that over on the Kings team schedule on their website. So if you're somebody who likes to coordinate your attire mm-hmm. with the attire that the players will be wearing, you can find that over at kings.com. But that's not where the news stops. Mr. Allen Styles, uh-huh. because this morning, one uh, Sam Amick, friend of the station, and uh, like you say, future friend of the show at some point, whenever Dave lets him free, uh, <laughs> a new veteran wing will be working out for the Sacramento Kings this week. As we learned last week, Jay Crowder was going to be in Sacramento. We also knew that Isaiah Thomas was spending some time here in Sacramento for a workout. <laughs> Well, the names have not stopped, and this is really interesting because I don't think we've seen anybody else outside of Sacramento really host this many players to be worked out, at least not publicly. We usually don't find out about these things, but again, Sam Amick this morning saying, per sources, the Kings are working out one TJ Warren this week, 31-year-old 
averaged a career high 19.8 points for the Pacers back in 1920. He last played uh, with the Minnesota Timberwolves last season where he played 11 games. And uh, Sam goes on to say the Kings have Jay Crowder and Nasir Little in this week as well as Sean Amick. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Sean Cunningham first reported. So that's week. all this week. That's what Sam is saying. Yeah, okay. the initial, I believe Sean's reporting last week was that Jay Crowder was going to be here uh, last week. I'm, I'm guessing maybe something uh, changed with that. And uh, Sam is now reporting that Jay, Jay Crowder, Nasir Little, and TJ Warren will all be working out in Sacramento this week. Did not know TJ Warren went 6'8", Chris. Yeah, he. Uh, I, I. I think he might be one of those listed height and then actual height kind of guys. I think he's more six six, but he's definitely a wing for sure. Um, super offensive minded, and you know, I think it's a little bit telling. But yeah, Sam Amick's right. Like nineteen point eight points per game all the way back in 19, uh, 2019 20 season. But he's a scorer, man. He is an absolute bucket. And I know he's dealt with some injuries throughout his career, which is why even at 31, uh, he's somebody who's looking for a job, even though he's he's been very productive. But he is an absolute bucket. I don't know if that's necessarily something that the Kings necessarily 100% need to address. But again, as we talk about these guys just kind of leaning into their strength, I do think TJ Warren would be a great bench scorer on top of uh, 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 Malik Monk and, and potentially Kevin Herter as well. Uh, somebody who can just light up the scoreboard every single night, TJ Warren. Let me ask you a question. As these names come out, right, and Isaiah Thomas, it feels like because we saw that report of Isaiah Thomas saying he wants to continue play, seems like the Kings said, no, thank you, Probably. at least for now. You have Jay Crowder, who's about to work out, and you have TJ Warren. Guys that you essentially know who they are in the league, and maybe TJ Warren, at, you know who Jay Crowder is more than a TJ Warren who's dealt with some injuries and things like that. And you got, you know, Chetty Osman, who ended up going overseas. What do you think the Kings, and not just the Kings teams at this point, what are they actually looking for? Are they, are they trying to look at fit? on the specific team are they looking to see okay we were watching this on film but he's actually bigger than i expected when we when we saw him in person or his defense does seem to translate what what exactly do you think with these guys who they've been around the block and you kind of know who they are in the league what what are these teams looking for uh i mean i think it depends on the team i mean right like you can't not not everything's going to fit a team universally what the kings need is completely different than what the bucks need. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's just whatever you feel like your team holds at this point, you're, you're not taking anybody who's going to be a major part of your, your rotation, you would hope. But uh, I would think that at this point in the off season, you're just looking to bring in depth and mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of fill in any major holes that you feel like you have, even, you know, at this point last year, the Kings were adding in, you know, Scott Labissier and Nerlens Noel, and then later would add in JaVale McGee. I think it's just, um, you know, whatever you feel like you haven't addressed yet this offseason, it's not going to be at a top level, but you try and address as many needs as possible. Yeah, yeah. And you know how I feel about Jay Crowder. TJ Warren at, at 31 is intriguing as well, and these guys are going to make the rounds. It feels like the Kings, as we've mentioned, there's not going to be any big deal made here, but at the same time, you can always get better. And if you can get better and not spend that much money, then why wouldn't you kind of go about that and, and give that an opportunity? So yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I want to see how Jay Crowder looks and, you know, you said Nasir little as well and TJ Warren. So, you know, we can always take any type of depth that, that you can get. And I think that's what the Kings are hoping for in, in these type of situations. Yeah, I like the Nasir Little one a lot. I, I think not a lot, but I I've, of those names, I like Nasir Little. He's the youngest one. Um, still, hopefully, has some. Uh, his thing is more offensively. I would think uh, he's a really strong body, but n hasn't really figured it out. Uh, spent some years in Portland. Spent last year with Phoenix. Um, you know, he's yeah, he's still trying to figure it out. I think that's a, a decent risk to take. I think Jay Crowder and and honestly TJ Warren as well. You just kind of know what both of those guys are. And, I feel like they're both um, definitely past their past their primes, I guess you would say. Um, I, you know, I think Jay Crowder would bring a, a nice little physicality and toughness to this team, maybe a defensive edge, mm -hmm. potentially somebody who can stand in the corner and hit a couple threes. Uh, TJ Warren, I think, 
is the one that is a little bit most confusing to me just because stylistically he is somebody who likes to have the ball in his hands a little bit. He is a little bit of an isolation score. He's honestly probably, if I had to compare him to somebody on the team, he is pretty closely in terms of style of play like DeRozan. Mm-hmm. He he kind of, again, likes to b- have the ball in his hands, likes to run through the pick and roll, uh, but can be an absolute bucket. I just feel like it could be possibly a little bit redundant with Malik. I just don't know uh, if you want two bench guys needing the ball in their hands at the level that both of those guys do. I, I don't know. I don't know if any of them will end up being. I mean, the funny thing is the one that the Kings ended up signing and Terry Taylor, we didn't hear anything about him. He just kind of randomly got picked up and, uh, gave they gave him a training camp deal and and we didn't really hear that he had worked out. He wasn't a big, obviously not as big of a name as Jay Crowder or TJ right. Warren or anything like that. So um, I do wonder how much of this is just them maybe doing agents a solid and getting their name mm. out there and saying, hey, yeah, we're totally willing to do it and not even saying we're we're not looking at these guys at all. But um, I just wonder how much of this is legitimately the Kings having interest in these guys and how much of it is, you know, just it's being reported. And so these guys are kind of still being considered as the season's right about to start. You know, maybe it is just, Oh my God, the Kings are working out Jay Crowder. We kind of had him half circled here and I'll just use Milwaukee as the example. Well, maybe if we really do want Jay Crowder, we better go out there and sign him quickly Mm -hmm. because it looks like Sacramento might want him again, just reading that because the only person the Kings signed kind of in this time frame has been Terry Taylor. And again, we just heard nothing about that and they signed him 10 days ago and it just kind of came and went. Yeah. And, and I would even go on that same path that you're going on, Chris, for somebody like an Isaiah Thomas, you know what I mean? Yeah. Making some headlines and, Oh, the Kings are working out Isaiah. Okay. He's still bopping around. Let's right. see, let's see what he's got. And, 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 if he can, if he can help the team as well, coming up next CBS sports, They rank all of the NBA coaches. Can you guess where Mike Brown falls? Styles and Watkins, Sackdown Sports. Can Mike Brown build on last season's Coach of the Year?